welcome Steve Malank to the Awesome Earthkind podcast. And if you would, please tell us uh, who you are, where you live and work and what you do. Thank you, Ron. Um, my name is Steve Malink. I'm here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, you know, I work for Malink Corporation, yeah, I've, a company I founded uh, almost 35 years ago. And we're a clean energy company. And, um, you know, we got started off doing HVAC testing and balancing, and then expanded to energy saving controls, and then over time to solar PV, and now even geothermal HVAC. So, um, you know, we consider ourselves a an emerging clean energy company. Outstanding. And why did you go into clean energy, Steve? What was your motivation? Well, initially it didn't start out that way. Again, I got started in the HVAC services area, but uh, the turning point for me was a building conference I attended in 2004 in Cleveland. It was a um, lead, um, you know, for the leadership in energy, environmental design um, conference. And it was to learn about green buildings. And I went there more out of curiosity, I had been reading more and more about LEED as a rating system for green buildings. And I you know, certainly didn't want this perceived movement to pass me by. And so I went there to learn about it and I came away just so inspired. Um, I, I met countless architects, engineers, building owners, code officials, construction firms, who were all intent about changing the building industry, that the path that it was on was unsustainable. And it so resonated with me. I just hadn't really heard of anyone articulate it in such, in, in such powerful ways. So I walked away from that experience, determined to be part of this movement, uh, so much so that we committed ourselves to become the first LEED Gold certified building in Ohio. We were in the throes of considering designing a new headquarters for uh, for our um, growing company. And I thought, you know what, we're going to do something that's never been done before in Ohio and, and and try to help lead rather than just follow this movement. Outstanding. And so could you tell us a little bit like what things that you did, how big is your space and how many employees and what kinds of uh, technologies did you install and are you sure. working on? Sure. Yeah. So that um, green building uh, initially rated as lead gold, which is not the highest level, but we event eventually did get it uh, certified at the highest level, which is uh, lead platinum. But initially, you know, we, we put in some core technologies like uh, geothermal HVAC. We had a super insulated envelope we had the most efficient windows and lighting systems that you know uh, you know were on the market at the time. Um, so you know, it was the the lead points were mostly uh, garnered from the energy side of things. But we also did things like we wanted to make sure that it, it was a green building in in terms of uh, the amount of fresh air and the um, uh, views to the outside and um, you know. Um, natural light coming into the inside and those type of things. So, um, and then over time we added solar PV and did a number of other improvements that took it to lead platinum. And then we even took it beyond that. We, we decided that we were gonna make it a net zero energy facility. And in fact, we just built our second um, HQ or our HQ2. Uh, it is also uh, net zero energy, but we really took everything we did on HQ1 to a whole new level. And it had the higher goal of showing that all of this could be done cost effectively because we wanted it to serve as a model for the building industry. We work in the building industry. We work with a lot of large companies like Walmart, Target, McDonald's, Starbucks, and many other national accounts. And um, we wanted to walk the talk in their eyes. Um, but to answer your other question, we're about 100 plus employees strong. Um, we're based in Cincinnati, but we have a national network of employee technicians um, so that we can cost effectively serve our, our national accounts. And um, we do all the things that I mentioned previously, you know, from HVAC testing and balancing to solar PV. Wonderful. So that new HQ that you built about how big was it? And when you say cost effectively, how did it compare with a standard construction? 
So our goal, uh, well, the first building and the second building, they're both 30,000 square feet. Um, and the goal was to um, design and build it at a cost premium of less than 15% over a conventional code compliant building. Because we thought the message would be pretty powerful if we could show that we could go net zero energy at, a, at that relatively small cost premium that if we could do that, why, why aren't more people doing that? In fact, why isn't everybody doing this? But at the end of the project, um, the cost premium ended up being less than 10%. It was 9%. So if, you know, done very intentionally and smartly, I, I believe that everybody in the building industry, uh, when, you know, uh, looking at new buildings, um, you know, that's the opportunity. Um, gosh, to have a net zero energy building at a cost premium of only 9%, it, it's not only a smart investment, but um, financial investment, but it's a smart investment in our, in our brand um, and in our people and our customers. So that 9% premium for a net zero building, um, was that 9% in, in before or after incentives or were there weather incentives? And what will you calculate as a return on that additional little bit of investment? Um, that was not including those um, incentives. So there's a thir there was a 30% um, investment tax credit on the solar PV system and a 10% tax credit on the geothermal system that we installed in HQ2. Um, but, you know, the tax credits are winding down over time, and we didn't want to show that this goal and strategy is 100% dependent on tax credits or any incentives, that it's just that increasing. And the, the, the cost of doing these things are just naturally coming down, and they should be done independent of such incentives. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. And I think it's it's amazing that you're able to do it just that way. But the message, too, that's out there is if you do take advantage of existing incentives, you could actually do the projects for less cost. Yes, yes, absolutely. Right. And there's other financing mechanisms that make it um, even easier, uh, such as uh, PACE financing. Um, PACE is an acronym for Property Assessed Clean Energy, and it's a growing financing mechanism across the country by which the cost of these renewable energy and energy efficiency measures are paid for over 20 to 30 years by an assessment on the property taxes of the building that you're investing in, rather than out of your own um, cash reserves or through a short-term loan, you're paying for it over the long term as you're accruing the benefits of the investment over the long term. So, you know, it's a way to structure the, um, the, the financing such that you're cash flow positive. You know, you're, 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 you're deriving the energy savings at a, at a greater rate than what you're having to pay out for the investments on those savings. Yeah, so that positive cash in your pocket from day one, long-term financing, and with PACE, I believe it's off your balance sheet too, right? Because it goes through property taxes. Exactly right. So it doesn't affect our uh, lending um, abilities in any way in financing our, um, you know, working capital or whatever. Fantastic. So in terms of the lessons that you learned while going through this and the challenges that you overcame, were there any particular that you'd like to share? Um, you know, I, I think the lesson is that um, the perception out there is that these things cost too much and therefore education is absolutely necessary. Um, you know, for me, when I went to that green building conference in Cleveland, I was also very much inspired that it was the right thing to do as well. And so for me, it's about education and inspiration that if we allow ourselves to think purely in financial terms, you know, that's, that's good, but an even better way is to view it as it's the right thing for businesses, um, you know, above and beyond the energy savings. Again, it's an enhancement to your, um, brand and, um, you know, your brand is everything as a company, you know, your reputation, uh, what do your customers think of you? What do your employees think of you? Your ability to attract 
better and better talent and better and better customers is supremely important, far more than the less strategic energy savings. And when you did your projects, did you do it all in-house or did you put it, uh, did you use outside contractors and was there a lot of education of them that you had to do as well? Or? Well, for the building of HQ1 and HQ2, you know, we went through traditional um, you know, models of, you know, hiring a general contractor and they hired out subs, but we were absolutely driving the process in terms of the design and the strategies, best practices. Um, but, you know, even above and beyond our, our two buildings, you know, I have a home and these same, you know, best practices were adopted at my home. That the, the thing that I could do myself very easily was install LEDs uh, in, in my home light fixtures. Um, and anybody can do that. You don't have to hire a contractor. But for the other things like installing a geothermal system, um, installing a solar PV system, uh, in, um, super insulating my attic, installing double pane windows, those were all things I hired contractors to do for me. Great. And so what would be your next step with everything you're doing there, Steve? Well, my next step is to promote my latest book. It's called Fusion Capitalism, A Clean Energy Vision for Conservatives. And, um, you know, I, why the, the title Fusion Capitalism? First of all, capitalism, it has both positive and negative connotations. But, you know, in my, in my way of thinking, it is uh, the best way to um, move markets to... Um, adopt what we need to do in, in, the, in this global economy in, uh, in which we live. You know, we need a clean energy revolution. And um, the best way to let a revolution play out is through this great system called capitalism. Now, um, why fusion? Well, fusion is the nuclear reaction that takes place on the sun every second of our day by which, you know, all the heat and light um, and the power that is derived from that heat um, can sustain us here on earth millions of times over. We don't need to um, drill and dredge up, you know, the fossil fuels deep inside the earth and to burn them and to uh, try to you know, deal with the, uh, the, the external costs afterwards. Um, you know, a, a, an economy purely based on the power from the sun will sustain us here on earth as the world's population continues to grow um, for infinity. Uh, billions of years is, is the expected life of the sun. So um, anyway, and, and why the uh, a clean energy vision for conservatives? Because, you know, I have been for the most part a conservative uh, during my lifetime, but I see that were that you know my my brothers and sisters on leaning on the right are on the right wrong track uh, when it comes to um, you know a vision that's you know based more on fossil fuels than on clean energy and we need to get off on this because climate change is real it's not a hoax it's um, it, you know science matters and um, you know writing this book is my attempt to um, nudge the conservative party and those who subscribe to you know their policies that we need to get it right we need to get on the right side of history when it comes to climate change and clean energy yeah conservative conserve at the core yes. center piece of it right exactly I mean, <laughs> exactly <laughs> what a novel concept yes. <laughs> I know. yeah it's pretty incredible um well we asked if you might have a quantum quote that you would share with people that would just sort of help open sure. up the mind to the next level do you have one that you'd like to share i do and in, in fact i have this quote in my book and i think it's a very appropriate uh in these divisive times in which we find ourselves. It's a quote, in fact, it's a song by Catherine Lee Bates. Uh, she wrote it in 1895. You've heard of it, but I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna recite the refrain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. It gives me a chill every time I hear it, Steve. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You bet.
Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, to me, one of the greatest tragedies of our times is not recognizing that we're all in this together. It's a small planet and whatever you're, wherever you stand on the political, racial, whatever other spectrum, look, you know, we're all brothers and sisters on this planet and we got to live together. And if we don't, then we'll kill each other off. Yes. And that would be a real shame. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sure. You're welcome. All right. Into the extended? Okay. You bet. Outstanding. So what do you think is one big, unique value, we call them supernovas, that people generally don't think of, but you think everyone should really know about? Well, the story that I just shared about what we did at my two buildings in my home um, is proven, it's practical, and it's profitable. And everybody can do this. What I did was not somehow unique to me. Uh, everything we did was off the shelf um, products and technologies. And, um, you know, you might say, well, gosh, I, I don't have the means to pay for a geothermal system or an H or for a solar PV system. And my response would be, well, then, at the least, um, sub subscribe to a, the green energy plan with your local utility more than likely they have such an option and for a very very small cost like half a cent per kilowatt hour you can have your utility buy an equal amount of clean energy from the grid and that means you're they're basically buying from a wind farm or a solar farm somewhere but for all the energy that you are consuming you can you are assured of being a smart consumer and, and getting it from a clean energy source rather than letting your utility just burn more coal to generate that electricity. And so you might say, well, Steve, how much, you know, half a cent a kilowatt hour, you know, put that in real dollar terms to me. And my response is, well, that the average homeowner um, uses about a thousand kilowatt hours per month and at half a cent per kilowatt hour, I think that's about $5 per month, about the cost of a Starbucks coffee. There you and go. so for such a small price, most people can afford the price of a Starbucks coffee and say, the better thing to do would be to do the right thing and to know that I'm part of the solution, not part of the problem. Outstanding. And there are many other simple things they can do as well. Uh, you know, energy is electricity. And that's one option is to sign up for the green program with your utility or with an energy service company, if you're in a competitive electric market, or to do the things like you said, just get some LED light bulbs and the LED light bulbs are 90% more efficient than an incandescent, which is mostly heat. So that's a simple thing. Or put in a programmable thermostat for just a little bit of money or turn down your heating system at night when you go to bed and et cetera. There's a bunch of simple, easy things that people can do. So take a step, right? Yes. That's the main yeah. piece and, and realize that energy is electricity. It's also your heating system. And then it's also your transportation. And there are things you can do with all three of those. So that's amazing. Thank you so much. Steve. Sure. Um, worst clean energy moment. Could you tell us what has been your worst moment in this illustrious career and what did you learn out of it? The worst moment um, was when Trump withdrew from the, um, U, the drew, withdrew the U.S. from the Paris Climate Treaty several years ago, and he has referred to climate change as a hoax or as, as a Chinese hoax, and um, you know, I'm I'm an engineer, and uh, it's critically important to me to understand, um, you know, the physics and the science of what, you know, 97 to 99 percent of the uh, climate scientists say. And um, who are we to dispute what the almost unanimous consensus is from the scientific world? You know, to me. Ron, it would be like if, you know, 97% of the oncologists out there told me my daughter had stage four cancer. And instead, you know, I was listening to somebody else who knew nothing about cancer um, and did something that, you know, you know, was, you know, 
damaging to her health and, and worse. Um, but, but that's in effect what we're doing um, as a country. You know, we're uh, totally disregarding um, where most of the nations of this earth want to go. And it's making us look ignorant. It's making us look arrogant. And um, it's, it's shameful, to be honest. Yeah, and, and you've been a conservative all your life, right? So, I mean, to me, it just must be such a disparity between conserving and science versus this, I don't know where it comes from, but I, what I say to people is, look, if you don't believe in science, no problem. Get rid of your phone, get rid of your house, get rid of everything that science is based on because science and engineering is what our whole civilization is based on. And you could not believe it if you don't want to, but then get rid of everything. Go live in the woods because otherwise yeah. you don't believe in science, right? You know, at the root of conservatism, I believe um, – is not only what you said earlier about conserving, but it's it's kind of a it's a pro-life position, and I think the anti-science um, uh, position and the belief that climate change is a hoax, therefore we're not going to do anything about it, or you know, those positions are not pro-life. Um, you know, the 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 very worst outcome will be that this planet becomes uninhabitable and decades and you know maybe it'll be as long as centuries but still that's no excuse because we're the ones that are sending the earth into this um uh, mode of you know feedback loops that will be it'll become impossible to turn it back um so you know that means all of life you know will ultimately um become extinct and to me that's not a pro-life position I, i wish conservatives would recognize um and I hope your book will help them wake up to that realization, Steve. So, Thank you. Okay, so the aha moment. Was there a particular, so maybe it was the, uh, was it that conference that was your aha moment in this whole thing? Or were there well, other ones? Well, you know, that conference was the genesis to getting me um, moving in that direction. But the real aha moment was after I built that first HQ1, I had no idea what would come from it. And what came from it was the request by countless people from the outside who heard about this super green building and they wanted to come and learn about it. They, they requested tours. And so over the years we have given hundreds of tours to uh, business groups, to uh, nonprofits, to schools, to government um, officials. And, you know, it, it, it showed me that there are PR and HR benefits um, above and beyond the energy savings. And this kind of goes along with the brand branding thing that I mentioned before, but the PR and, and HR benefits are such that, you know, they far surpass the energy savings in value. The fact that we're now able to attract, you know, the very best of talent. Um, the fact that customers are now knocking our doors. We heard that you are doing these things and we, we, we respect and admire your leadership and we want to do business with you. Those are things that we couldn't have paid for in advertising. Um, so that, that was the biggest aha moment. Um, and I think every company out there stands to benefit. And I think, you know, many are, you know, like Apple, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, you know, they get it that, being on the right side of history is going to make their brand stronger. And, you know, they want to do business with the world and they can't afford to be, you know, upsetting half the world, you know, on, on what's going on with climate change. So, um, you know, just in fact, last week, the, the business round table, um, you know, put out the position that, you know, we, we need to put a price on carbon, um, that's getting on the right side of history and more and more of the business world is, is getting it. I just the wish that our federal government and our state governments would kind of learn from what the business world is learning. Yeah, there's, um, I say when the people lead, the leaders will follow. So I think it's up to all of us to speak our peace and speak up and let folks know and 
you know, not, not let it go on if uh, things are going in the direction that we don't want it to. And I think clearly the business, the business voice is one of the loudest. So it's, it's absolutely outstanding that you're taking this position, Steve, and you and your company are out there on the front lines, letting folks know that this is the right thing to do. It's good for business. It's good for profitability and it's good for the world and it's good for your brand. Hey, yes, yes. Win, 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 win all the way down the line. So absolutely. All right. Okay, into the pulsar round. Okay. So these are short, succinct, amazing, and mind-blowing answers. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. What's the best advice you've ever received? How about unto thyself be true. Be authentic. Don't try to be something you're not. Don't be pretentious. Just be who you are and let your real self come out outstanding unto yourself be true love it all right a personal habit that contributes to your success well for me it's stop talking and start doing you know i think i'm um i'm just the entrepreneur type and i didn't realize that when i was going through engineering school and then i went on to get my mba but then i had some real world work experiences in fortune 500 companies and you know, I, I, I didn't like the bureaucracy and the red tape and, the, um, you know, the negative cultures that are out there. So, you know, for me, it's just, let's roll our sleeves up. Let's start doing rather than just talking. Just do it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. An internet resource you'd like to share that you think people should take a look at? You know, there, there is no particular uh, one internet source um, but every day I'm inspired when, I, when I'm um, reading uh, the, uh, what's happening in, um, in the Wall Street Journal of all places and in many other medium. But, um, you know, there's great stories about, uh, could be about Ford uh, coming out with their electric truck or that Tesla's um, enterprise value is greater than GM, Ford, and Toyota combined, um, and all the great things that Apple or Google is doing and, you know, getting to, uh, you know, uh, minimizing, reducing their carbon footprint. And, you know, it is virtually every day I'm reading a story about a business. And so, um, you know, if, if you're conscious of it, aware of what I'm saying about this, this movement turning into a revolution, it is happening. Outstanding. So normally I would ask you for a book, but since it's fusion capitalism, a clean energy vision for conservatives, I think that's absolutely your book uh, recommendation. But why don't you also tell us about your prior book, CEO Power and Light and Transcendental Leadership for a Sustainable World and what that yeah. was all about and why you saw that one. Boy, I, I, wrote, that. I wrote that book um, several years ago and the purpose of it was to um, educate and inspire CEOs of the business world to recognize the strategic opportunity of clean energy and, um, you know, thereby not only saving energy, but uh, improving their brand, uh, which is the most important uh, thing that they have. And, um, you know, it was kind of laser focused at, you know, less than 1% of the world's population, those who lead our companies who are able to you know, you know, drive um, change down through the organization more effectively, I think, than you often see it moving from the grassroots on up. Um, and so, um, you know, that, it, that was just another attempt to um, move influence uh, those that might be um, moved to change. Great. Steve, if you had a magic wand and you could change one thing for everyone in the world, what would it be? Well, if I was God, I would stop climate change from happening. Um, but since I'm not, the other, next best thing would be, what can I do to change man? It would be to get the federal government to put a price on carbon so that we can stop climate change from happening. Excellent. Um, so. Okay. Hey. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. WTF or F, weather time fudge or weather time fun, an extreme weather event that you live through and tell the tale or the most fun you ever had and the type of weather it was when you were doing it. 
Well, the weather event that um, I'm going to mention is not something that I personally lived through, but I'm, again, I'm, a, I'm reading what's going on in the world and a receiver of the news, and one can't help but, you know, be, um, you know, just surprised and amazed at all the, the um, destruction going on, whether it be the wildfires in California and Oregon, the, the um, hurricanes in the Gulf. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's almost every day. In addition to reading the good news about what the business world is doing to address climate change, it's equally disappointing and heartbreaking to read about all the catastrophes that are taking place that Mother Nature is unraveling um, as a result of climate change. So, um, you know, the polar ice caps are melting and, you know, it's, it's once again, it's physics that once all the ice melts and it will on this current trajectory that the uh, sea levels will rise like almost 30 feet. And what does that mean for all the cities along the coastlines of this world where millions and millions of people live? Um, you know, the, 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 the devastation will be utterly in, incalculable. And I'm not a doom and gloom person. I, I refuse to spend my podcast talking about that. So I'm going to, you know, focus on the good stuff, the, the, the strategic, you know, the, the, the biggest opportunity of the 21st century is the clean energy revolution. And um, gosh, um, it, this is the U.S.'s, you know, great opportunity to lead the world again, like we did so many times in the 20th century. Um, and if we don't do it, well, China probably will. But if China doesn't, you know, it, you know we're, we're facing, you know, utter destruction in the future. But again, I, I believe in that man is going to come around, that humankind will come around, that our federal government will come around and turn this movement into an, a full-on um, technological economic revolution. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt that the forces of nature, which air, water, earth, and sun. Those forces of nature are amazing and awesome and frightening in a scale. The fires, the tornadoes, the hurricanes, the floods, the, the droughts, the massive amount of change that we're underseeing. But the great part on the other side of it, and I absolutely agree with you, is that there's thousands of times more energy in those forces. We have the technology, and if we're smart about it, we can save money while we're making this transition and create a better, more prosperous, just, and sustainable civilization. And we humans, we have that capacity. We just got to decide we want to do it and we can make it happen and so it's so great to see business leaders like yourself stand up and take the lead because i believe you're absolutely right when when folks like all the businesses start to step up and other folks jump in there's nothing that we can't do so yeah. it's very hopeful yeah. Yeah, great. thank you yeah. all right what's the one thing you're most energized about today well, I, I don't want to sound redundant, but it is that the business world is getting it and they are fast moving towards seizing this economic opportunity called clean energy. Um, they want to, you know, um, attract better people uh, to their labor force. Um, they want more uh, customers and, um, you know, look at uh, companies even like BP. Um, they're, they've just recently made the commitment to um, becoming a clean energy company, one of the largest oil companies in the world. And, um, you know, they, many years ago, they had this, uh, you know, this almost, I'm going to say a fake attempt to go to clean energy, by you know, BP supposedly stood for beyond petroleum. But now this sounds more earnest than ever because they, they can see the writing on the wall um, oil prices um, are going down. The cost of extracting that oil is becoming ever more costly. And guess what? There's not going to be the demand for that oil in 10, 20 years when the whole world's moving to electric vehicles. So um, I, I, it's inspirational to see companies that have gone full circle from you know the, the fossil fuels to now it's the future is clean energy. 
Yeah, it really is inspirational and hopeful and no doubt that it's going to occur. It's just a question of how fast and if we're fast enough, we can avoid some of the worst and who knows what we can accomplish. Yes. So yes. absolutely agree. Okay, uh, grand finale, a parting piece of guidance. And if you want people to connect with you, what's the yeah. best way? Well, I'll answer the uh, second question first. Uh, they can reach out to me through our website at um, malinkcorp.com or uh, me personally at smalink at malinkcorp.com. That's M-E-L-I-N-K. That's how you spell my last name. Um, but the, the parting piece of, of guidance or advice would be that, um, you know, we're part of the solution. Um, this isn't just a problem for the federal and state governments to fix. Uh, it's so easy to shoot arrows at other people who aren't doing their fair share. Um, you know, gosh, climate change is too big for me to do anything. Well, well, get off your duff. And the next time you buy a car, don't buy a conventional um, internal combustion engine car that's going to burn gasoline. Think, where's the, where's the market going? How can I be part of the solution? And buy a, um, an electric vehicle. There's more and more vehicles coming onto the market every day. And, um, you know, if you want to have a, 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 a you know, a, a, a role to play is create more demand for these products. Um, insulate your home and uh, buy those uh, LEDs. Um, create demand for the marketplace that you want the federal government to create for you. Um, you know, uh, we're not hapless victims. Um, you know, we can be, we can move markets. Uh, you know, millions of people can move markets. So all of you out there, do it. Outstanding. Just do it, folks. Take your next step and head us in the right direction. And together we can make all the difference in the world. Steve Malink, thank you so much for your time and your insights and gosh, good luck with fusion capitalism, a clean energy vision for conservatives. It's coming out next month. Coming out October 27th and um, it'll be available on Amazon and, and all the other um, platforms. So um, I, I, you know, most importantly hope that again, uh, you know, I don't, I, I care less about preaching to the choir than I do about getting this message to my, my fellow conservatives out there who um, need to, to hear this message. Yeah, and, and I think that one of the most hopeful things is that when we take a look at the world and we realize that, you know, it's always those things that seem so disparate. You know, Einstein and others had various different perspectives on it, but, you know, we take a look at the world and there's men and there's women and there's up and there's down and there's black and there's white and there's right and there's wrong. But you know what? When we take a look at all those things that seemingly are so different and we have these great differences of opinion, there always seems to be a common or a higher ground that unifies everything and brings us together and lets us achieve things that we never thought was possible before. So I'm hopeful that this kind of dialogue and conversation can bring together people who have very diverse urgent perspectives, but realize that there is some common and some higher ground that we can reach if we just decide to listen to yes. each other and, and strive to reach out to each other. Yes, so. agreed. And Ron, thank you for what you're doing in your, your part of the world. Uh, you know, we have different spheres of influence, and I'm glad that our spheres are intersecting in the way that they are. Because, um, I, I, you know, hopefully that will uh, expand our both of our, our uh, messages and um, so anyway, you're doing great work and uh, thank you very much. And thank you very much, Steve.